morning. On this blustery, wonderful October morning, um, I'd like to welcome everyone that's gathered in the sanctuary and a special welcome to everyone that's gathered um, at their computers or their phones to watch us online. And once again, we're going to have uh, Pastor Tim Hoyt uh, will lead us in worship this morning, and so that's going to be awesome as usual. I'd like to ask if there are any announcements to be made today. That's wonderful. Thanks for joining us for worship. Yeah, today's uh, uh, a role here at the United Church of Christ in Washington. <laughs> Y'all had a wedding yeah, last yeah, night. That's great. Dad just had heart surgery uh, yesterday, or Friday, sorry. Um, should we come home today and just keep them in your purse, please? Yeah. Two cents and uh, they augured out another one that was 100% block, so. Wow, was that, was that an emergency, or did you know that was coming? No, we didn't know it was coming. It was close, we were down in uh, his cabin down at Yankton, and he got really busy, and yeah. Yeah, we got lucky. Thank God. Yes. Okay, very good. Well, thanks for sharing, Troy. Um, any other announcements or joys or concerns? We do have in, in the bulletin uh, next Sunday is going to be the hayride and meal, uh, and that is um, all provided by the fellowship committee, so that should be fun to. Resurrect that. Club Jam will be meeting on the 27th. That's a Wednesday at 3.30. So does anyone have anything else I'd like to add? Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Well, we're going to start with the call to worship. If you see that printed in your bulletin, uh, these are the words that that very uh, comforting words, I would say, from, from Jesus. So let's recite these together where he said, And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you take your hymn books, we'll sing, We Gather Together, number 421. Thank you. 
I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locust and the young locust, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your, your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Our psalm is from 65. And... Pastor Kelly had sent me this when she was still here, and it's for the director of music. So when she dubbed me the choirista, she sent this to me. It's a psalm of David, a song. Praise awaits you, our God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answers prayer, to you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with rain. For you have so ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty, and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. Our next reading is Mark 10, verses 46 through 52. And then they came to Jericho, as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Tim Timaeus, was sitting on the, by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Well, as Jill was reading that Psalm 65, were you thinking of, you know, all the, it's been a beautiful time of year. I don't know if you noticed this past week, but I noticed every day just the colors of the, the leaves and how uh, part of that psalm said, I think, how God's creation sings. And you look at some of those color schemes, the reds and the, um, the yellows and the oranges, and it's just like, God's creation does sing. Uh, yesterday we were driving down to Wayne, Nebraska. Our son runs for USF. And so as we were driving, just a really pretty time of day, 
Uh, I think we left about 7 o'clock, so the, as we're going, the sun's coming up. Uh, we're driving south, so the sun's coming up on our left, and we look to the right, and the moon is still hanging there in the sky. You're just, you know, God's creation, when you think about it, is so amazing how God put things together. So, thanks for those readings. Well, we're going to focus today upon the, the gospel reading, uh, Mark 10, uh, about blind Bartimaeus. And I entitled this, this message, Healthy Faith. And the words that Jesus said to the blind man is that your faith has made you well. And I want you to think about that, those words. Jesus said, your faith has made you well. And the question that should come up in our minds when we hear that is, but isn't it God who makes us well? We can't make ourselves well. But Jesus says, your faith has made you well. We'd love to hear God say that to us, wouldn't we? That we have good faith, that we have healthy faith, that our faith is so strong. But so many times in the gospel, what did Jesus say to people? Oh, you of little faith, didn't he? Didn't he always say, your faith is weak. You need to have faith. We, over and over in the gospels, we hear Jesus say that to people. And so often in our lives, if we're honest, we'd have to say, that's what Jesus would say to us, too. Oh, you of little faith. Uh, but what we want to strive for is healthy faith. How much better to have Jesus say to you, Man, your faith is strong. Good job. Keep it up. You have such good faith. That's what Bartimaeus got to hear. Your faith is healthy. Your faith has made you well. Think about what faith is. And if you want a definition, you go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and it says that, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith is the assurance of things that we hope for, the conviction that even though we don't see it, it will be. That's what faith is. Well, we didn't see, we weren't there when Jesus died on the cross. Were we? Were any of you? I wasn't. But there's a song, isn't there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Well, we have to answer no. We weren't there. But we still believe it, right? We have a conviction that it happened. We're not in heaven right now, right? Have any of you been there? I haven't. Have you seen it? No but it's what we hope for. We have a conviction of something that is unseen, that's faith. We can't see or understand or begin to comprehend, and we just went through the uh, confession of sins. We can't comprehend how what Jesus did on the cross removes our sins as far as the East is from the West. We can't comprehend that, and yet, we believe it, that's faith, that's faith. Question for us today is how healthy is our faith? Is it sick, is it wavering, is it on the brink, or is it strong, is it shining brightly? Or most probably, it's somewhere in between those two extremes. It's maybe not on the brink, and it's maybe not really strong, it's maybe somewhere in between. For most of us, I'd say that's probably true. So in an effort to increase our faith, to get to that far extreme where Jesus says, you have really good faith, let's look at Bartimaeus and consider what was so strong about his faith. The first thing is that he believed. He believed without seeing. Think of this, he was a blind man. He believed in Jesus. He believed that Jesus is the Messiah. How do we know that? We know it by what he said. He said, Jesus, son of David. Now, I bet most of you have seen lots of Christmas plays put on by children, right? The little boy and girl, 
they don't dress up as David and Mary, do they? They dress up as Joseph and Mary. But here was Bartimaeus crying out, Jesus, son of David. Shouldn't he have been crying out, Jesus, son of Joseph? Because Joseph was Jesus' earthly father, his adoptive father. But no, he cried out, Jesus, son of David. So who was David? David had lived, at that time, David had lived like a thousand or more years prior to the time of Bartimaeus. Who was David? David was the guy who God made a promise to, that David, one of your sons from your own body, will always be king of the people of Israel, will always be king. And so then there were these lines of kings, some good, some bad, some terrible. And then eventually the kingdom was no more. The people of Israel got conquered. They got shipped away to a far off land. And so basically the kingdom of Israel ceased to exist. But not the hope of the people because they knew the promise of God that sometime in the future, a son of David would come and would rule the kingdom forever. There would always have be this kingdom ruled by a son of David. So here's Bartimaeus, the blind man. We don't know what he had heard about Jesus, but we can't know. Had he heard how Jesus healed people? Probably. Had he heard Jesus teach? Maybe. All we know is that he said and cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. And that cries out his belief that he believed that Jesus is the Messiah. He believed that Jesus could do whatever, that Jesus was powerful. Then the question for us is, do we have that belief? Though we can't see Jesus, do we believe that Jesus is our Savior? Do we believe that he is almighty? that he can do anything. Do we believe he's the eternal king? So yeah, to have faith, we have to have that belief, don't we? Bartimaeus went further, though. He didn't just believe. He acted out on that belief. If we want to get an idea of how he did that, I want you to imagine yourself doing something. First of all, I want you to imagine yourself sitting somewhere at home, in church, in your car, and saying a prayer, a silent prayer, Jesus, help me with something. And we all do that. But now I want you to imagine yourself not being able to see physically, and sitting on the ground, and hearing this huge crowd of people all around you, and then not just whispering a prayer to God, but crying out at the top of your lungs, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Would we do that? Would we be embarrassed to do that? I would. Especially when people start to tell me to be quiet. That's what they said to Bar Bartimaeus. Cut it out. You're bothering everybody. You're bothering, don't, he doesn't have time for you anyway. Bartimaeus, just sit there and beg for money. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> Would that be enough to shut us down? Probably. What did he do? He turned up the volume. Kept doing it. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That's putting your belief into action, isn't it? How healthy is our faith? When we try to put our faith into action and we encounter resistance, how soon is it before we stop? Do we stop right away? Or do we get discouraged and quit pretty quickly? When we pray, how long do we stick with it? as we're seeking the will of God? Is it a pretty short experience, or do we keep going? Do we go deep into what we think God's will is for us? 
when a relationship that we have is not what it should be, how quickly do we give up on that relationship, throw up our hands and say, oh well, things aren't working out. When someone we know and love is not walking with God, how quickly do we give up on that and say, it's no use. They'll never turn. Bartimaeus didn't give up, did he? When he encountered that resistance, he pushed farther. He kept going. Jesus told a story in the Gospel of Luke about there was this widow and she needed to have, and this was a story, this was a made-up story by Jesus, but he said there was this widow in a town that had a ruler that wasn't, he didn't fear God and he didn't care about justice. But this widow would keep coming to him saying, give me justice. And it got to the point where he was, he was being bothered so much by this woman that even though he wasn't a godly judge and he didn't care about her, he said, she's bothering me so much, I just want to be done with her, and so I'll give her justice, and so he did. And Jesus' point in telling that story is that if that guy who didn't care about God and didn't care about people, if, if he delivered justice, how much more will our loving God deliver justice to us? But we have to keep pressuring him. That was Jesus' point, that we, we should keep Asking day and night, keep seeking God day and night, like Bartimaeus did. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, Bartimaeus. No, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He kept at it. He kept at it. That isn't all he did. One more, he took it all the way. And here's how I know that. You know, sometimes our steps of faith are limited, I would say, by what we fear to lose if we go after Jesus. That's the definition of faith. Faith is something we can't see. So it's scary to think that if we go after something we can't see, it's hard to give up something that we're comfortable with, isn't it? That's why we purchase insurance, isn't it? Car insurance, we don't expect to go have an accident, but we want insurance in case we have a fender bender. We don't want to get sick, but if we do, we want insurance for that. Well, Bartimaeus' insurance was his cloak. His cloak. He probably spread that cloak on his lap so people could throw money into it, and then that was his source of income. When it got cold, I'm sure he used that cloak for warmth. When Jesus said, call Bartimaeus, and the people said, hey, cheer up, old man. He's calling you. What did Bartimaeus do? To springing, well, let's read it. It says, throwing off his cloak, he sprang to his feet and, and went to Jesus. Throwing off his cloak. Throwing it off. Not hanging on to it and going to Jesus. No, throwing it off. Why would Mark put that in the gospel? I believe to show us that Bartimaeus, once he made the decision to go after Jesus, he said, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. I'm leaving the old behind, the cloak. Think about this. Blind man gets to Jesus, says, Jesus, I want to have my sight back. And Jesus said, well, I'm sorry, but not today. Now this cloak is back there in the crowd. Somebody probably swiped it, right? There's no guarantee that he's going to get his cloak back. But when he took that all-in step of faith, he said, I don't care. Because when, once I get to Jesus, that's all that matters. Throwing off his cloak. Jesus calls us to that kind of faith, doesn't he? He calls us to something that we can't see, something unknown, wants us to believe in him, okay? Wants us to act on that, and wants us to go all in. And I mentioned that I don't think any of us
has the faith of Bar Bartimaeus, but I think all of us can have that faith. And that's something we can shoot for. And I think that's what Jesus wants of us. Amen. Let's sing, Come, O Thou Fount of Every Blessing, 459. Bad health today. 
were in need of, of strength physically and, and that you would uh, help them, those who have had surgery, think of Mark and pray that you would heal him, and give him a good recovery. Think of others who are just down in, in some other way, maybe not physically, but, but in some other way, that you would give them a, a boost of encouragement and, and inspiration today. And then, and then if we're just feeling good, that, that you would help us to, to give you thanks every day. And we pray now the, the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In your bulletin is printed a call to service uh, taken from Ephesians 2. Let us read together. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Well, now unto him who is able to do more than anything we ask or imagine, according to the power that is at work within us, to the only God, uh, the glory, majesty, and dominion, both now and evermore, through Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. And we're going to sing, uh, Blessed be the tie that binds, number 393 in your hymn books. Thank <laughs> you. 